Hey everybody, Scott Burnett here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well today. Hope you've had a good week. This is Friday evening. I got off from work a little while ago. And I thought I'd get started on a project that I've been wanting to do for a real long time. I just hadn't pulled the trigger on it. So here we are in my Carolina Skiff 198 DLV. Let me show you around a little bit. Here in the garage, there's the Yamaha hammer and the, the big hummingbird and trolling motor and just a whole bunch of stuff up here it's gonna be a project that I've been wanting to do so last year my brother got a brand new boat and I helped him rig it up and trolling motor batteries graph uh, a whole bunch of lighting and wiring you can see the videos up here I'll put a playlist up here and as I was doing that, I kept thinking, boy, my boat doesn't have this. My boat doesn't have that, and it don't have two of those, and three of those, and 16 of those. I, I said, man, my boat is bare. Well, I, I got to looking, and my boat really isn't up to code. I've had it for almost 11 years. Next month, it'll be 11 years. And the boat wasn't rigged out like it should have been. It wasn't professionally rigged. Um, like some of the wiring that I had, I had uh, just fuse blocks, and this is not marine wire. Let me get you over here. That's not marine wire. The trolling motor wire is a number 10. I'm going to link a chart from Minn Kota that gives you all the uh, wire sizes for how many amps you're pulling for your trolling motor. Uh, none of the splices were marine grade. You know, they didn't have heat shrink tubing on them or anything like these do. And I said, all right, we're going to fix that. So a little bit at a time, I've been, I've been buying up stuff um, several months now. And I've got it here on a board. And I'll show you a picture of what I had before. This is what I had before. And it was just a mess. And, but it all worked, but I never had a problem with it, but it just looks bad. And I'm at the point in life now, I need to fix it right. I want it to look good. If somebody opens a hatch up here, I want it to look good. So, show you what I got. Let me... So, I've got a piece of plywood here that I have put two coats of a really good marine paint on. Make sure I got you here. Okay, so I've, I've got this board and I've got two real heavy coats of a Kiwi Grip paint that has sealed this thing up that no water can get to it. All right, here is the onboard charger that I've had for a long time. It's a motor guide 5.3, still works, does a great job. Because I got two Group 27 batteries down here and here on the back wall, I'm gonna turn you around here. This is where I'm gonna be mounting this board. So I have a battery disconnect switch that'll be right here. I got a circuit breaker. My trolling motor did not have a circuit breaker, fuse, or anything. And I watched a video last week of a trolling motor that shorted out and shorted out the big marine deep cycle batteries. It was not pretty. All right, I have a fuse block that has a positive negative terminal and you put all your little automotive style fuses here and I have a terminal strip. Now what this is gonna be, this is gonna be for the circuits I have up here to, for my green fishing lights and any LED lights that I wanna put inside. Um, I wanna put a USB port up there. I have a little panel with a switch and a trolling motor receptacle. I want to put a USB port up there for my GoPros or charging a cell phone or anything else. So right now, I've already measured this board. I've got it ready to go. All we need to do is mount everything on it. So I'm going to start doing that right now. And we are going to make this thing look good, I hope. I've got stainless steel screws for everything. And there'll be links to everything in the description. I've got everything marked off and the whole bit. So what I'm gonna do is take my screwdriver and my drill. 
and we'll start putting the screws to it. And then what we're going to do, we're going to mount it in the boat with some adhesive and a couple of screws. We'll let it dry overnight and then tomorrow I will come down and start wiring the boat up. And I have marine, I forgot to show you, I have marine grade wire. And I have marine grade terminals with heat shrink tubing. And I got a heat gun and everything. And we're going to put this thing together just like it's supposed to be. And this comes with a cover, and this comes with all kind of labels and everything else. It's gonna look good. I do believe it is. All right, that's got everything mounted on the board just the way I want it. Now what we're gonna have, we're gonna have a hot lead coming off the battery, the 24 volt side, and I forgot to show you, this is my, hang on a minute. This is my 24 volt, 70 pound thrust, main coater riptide with iPilot. I picked up a 60 amp trolling motor or uh, breaker and this is this is a you know it trips if there's something bad then all you do is reset it and clear whatever's shorted now the clear grip from gorilla is a waterproof adhesive and it's very strong very durable i'm gonna use it and i'm gonna use epoxy along with stainless steel screws. So, so I can get this down here without knocking the camera off. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put some of this clear grip on here. What I got, I got some PVC pads that I mount on the bottom of the board because I'm not totally flat. You have to work around things I'd have to do it in my normal job, and you have to do it on the boat. So there's the clear grip. Where's my screwdriver at? Here. And I know professional boat riggers would a bunch of holes in the boat and stuff and I really don't want to do it although I am going to drill a couple later on Hopefully you can see that. It's got the clear grip and the clear grip and the two screws. I'm gonna add another screw right here. This is a little structure member right here for the front. And I was able to drill into it. 
So the onboard charger will hook up back up to the two batteries. And uh, then it looks good. Now I'll mix up some epoxy. I'll do it off camera. It's just a two part gorilla epoxy. All right, so I got the epoxy finished here. Now this is just a two part gorilla epoxy, waterproof. Got a five minute uh, work time, 20 minute cure time, I think. That's about like the Gorilla Clear Grip. It's a five minute work time, 20 minute. You better have it on there. So, got it. Turn you over here. Not much room. So there you have it. There is the board. I mean, it's, it's on there. So I will let that cure overnight and tomorrow we'll come down and uh, start putting the wires to it. Y'all stay with us. All right, back here the next morning. Uh, everything is good and cured. It ain't coming off. So what I want to do, these are what I've always called sticky bags. And they're little uh, piece of plastic that you put on things and you get a cable tie or a tie wrap as we call them and you're able to fasten your wires neatly like down a run or a, a wall or something you can stick these on they have adhesive on the back of them you just peel that off and stick them and then you have your wires sitting there and you can neatly run your wires where you want them to go. Well, I'm gonna help it out. I'm gonna put a little Gorilla Clear Grip on there to help out. But I got a whole bunch of them. And these are sticky bags. What are the actual names of them? Mount one by one mounting bases. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start sticking these on. Let me get my Clear Grip. I always have you a piece of cardboard because this stuff will come out and leak on things and then you can't get it off. But I'm going to go ahead and start putting them on here so I can route the wires really neat. Once I get those on, let that cure for a little bit. I'll start up at the front at my troll motor receptacle and I'll start running this number six wire back. And one thing I want to talk about, marine grade wire, you don't have to use it. I mean, use whatever you want to because this is your boat. Now, if you're doing it for a customer, I would use marine grade wire. But uh, marine grade wire has thinner, and I'll show you when I start making connections. It has thinner conductors, and it's tinned where it has a coating on each conductor. And it's more flexible than other wire. And the reason it's tinned like that, this wire will come in contact with water at some point, and you don't want it to wick the water up. If it's tinned, it'll, it'll stay away and you won't have corrosion. So that's my understanding of it. So I'm gonna get started on this. I'll bring you back when I get these things run because I'm gonna have to lay down in here and stick them up. I'm gonna run here on the board and then I'm gonna run them down the middle so everything's nice and neat out of the way and I can't catch the wires like with a net. So it's been about 15 minutes. Got the Gorilla Clear Grip cured. Got them on here. Um, I'll make a little video on my phone here so I don't have to move the camera right yet. And as you can see, I got them there so I can run the wiring. Then I've got them all the way down to the very front of the boat where my wires are going to go. So, let's go ahead and get started on the wire. So I bought number six AWG marine grade wire. And this is a company called Gear IT. I was going to buy a Pacer wire, but holy cow, it was it was twice as high as this, and I, these all have good ratings or good reviews rather. 
You know, I'm not going to professionally to the ocean, so I'm, I figure this is good enough. It looks good. I mean, it's got real heavy uh, insulation on it, and the, the wires are tinned. The conductors are tinned, rather. So we're going to go with it. If I have to swap it out at some point, I have to swap it out. That's what life's all about, anyway. Something breaks, you fix it. So seems like things are disposable nowadays instead of built to last. It's weird. First washer and dryer had lasted 27 years. Not anymore. Okay, so I'm gonna get a measurement on this from the front of the boat to here is four feet. And then I'm gonna allow, so I gotta allow a little bit for my connection there. A little bit to come down. I'm gonna go ahead and cut those eight feet. And a handy way of measuring it, if you're six feet tall, your arm span from fingertip to fingertip is six feet. I'm six foot two. So there you go. So I'm gonna measure six. And about two more. That's about two. Get my, get my cable cutters. There we go. If you ever need to cut big, bigger wire, those right there, I'll put a link to those in the description. I've had those 25 years or more. And I probably had them 30. Very good. They still make them. Made by the Klein Incorporated. Excellent. So these will be stripped back and just go right into the, the receptacle. All right, so I got them stripped back. Let me grab my drill motor receptacle here. So that's, that's all we got on the back. And it's got a twist lock plug on the front. Where's my screwdriver? There's my screwdriver. Take this old number 10 out. Put some dielectric grease in it. Just a little bit in there. And we'll torque them down. Make sure you, the conductors on this wire are so thin, make sure you got them down. All right, so I have my trom motor receptacle done. I will go ahead and run these wires down always make you a service loop in your wire so you can pull your panels off if you ever have to work on it or anything you'll thank yourself Not too much junk on the floor That's good on that part. Now I want to show you the, the actual crimp I'm going to put on here and the heat shrink. So we'll we'll come right back when I got everything laid out here for that. All right, so I got my wire stripped back. 
these are a tinned copper lug for number six wire. Uh, supposedly not supposed to corrode. So, and I have a pair of crimpers. I actually purchased these and they are adjustable for all different sizes of wire or uh, connectors rather. Well, you can say wire. So all you do is just put the right size little uh, shoe on there. Just twist it around. Got my wire on here. I got a piece of heat shrink down here. We're going to use a heat gun on it. And all we're going to do is crimp it. And every time you make a connection, whether it's a little butt splice on a number 18 wire or a two alt, pull that thing. All right, now this heat shrink, I got it. It's supposed to be for number 14 to number six. So we're going to try it here and see. It's awful big, but we're going to try it and see. Always run it out there to the first notch or to the end of the connector and all we're going to do is hold it right there and see how it does I got it on the lowest it has uh, two, two settings on it I got it on the lowest one And there you go perfect so this will go back to the battery the other one will go to the circuit breaker I'll do the other one off camera and come right back here's the battery disconnect switch and I've got heat shrink crimps and uh, I got a small jumper going down to the circuit breaker this will go over to the battery I went ahead and cut it about three feet I'll make up the connection and get the right length on it. But I'll go ahead and get this mounted, get this tied to the circuit breaker. Um, and then once I get the the common or negative run and get the positive run, troll motor will be done. Then we can work on the, the 12 volt circuit. This is why I don't like doing this on camera because I don't fit. Well, I wouldn't do this for a living. Here we go. Oh, crap. Ah. Why don't make these things bigger? Okay, I'm not tightening up the cable ties all the way because I'm going to run another wire up through there. When I get everything run, I'll cinch it up and uh, make it nice and neat. Now, one thing about it, we got a rain here last night and it's always humid anyway. So my Gorilla Glue didn't, didn't work. I had to use epoxy. So I had to mix up some epoxy and let it wait, or let it cure rather. So I'm going to crawl up in there and get that one right there. And it's not going to be glamorous, so I'm going to turn the camera off for just a second. <laughs> may say a bad word. So, let me, I'll come right back. Okay. As you can see, I've got them all zip tied up. I got the common coming back to the battery, or negative coming back to the battery here. This is the 24 volt negative side. Positive 24 is over there. I'm going to hook up this one jumper I got coming from the disconnect to that. That'll have the trolling motor part of it done. I'll do the 12 volt circuit off because it's just same thing, half voltage. And I'll tie it over here to the thing. I'll show you when I get done. I really miss my kid being here. He's a lot smaller than I am. Oh. 
All right, so I checked my voltage at the at the batteries and the receptacle. My meter on. Went ahead and plugged my twist lock plug in. When I turn this on, you ought to hear a beep. So that means it's got power. Let me grab my let me grab my remote. This is my high pilot remote. Go around your neck. Um, controls every aspect of the trolling motor. So I'm going to turn it on. Okay, it beeped. And the battery's probably about dead in this one. That's another thing you do at the first of every year is change the big uh, cell battery out to 2450. It's running. So you got to make sure you don't smack the boat when you do that. But y'all can see that is working you hear it beep so I got power on it um, you can check your batteries on the trolling motor see how much, how much charge you got right there so they're fully charged I had 25 and a half volts across it Okay, so now I got the 24 volt circuit done. I'm gonna start on the 12. We'll be right back. Okay, I got about 99% of it done. Um, let me show you what I got. I didn't film the 12 volt part because it. Let me get you batteries. I can put you in here. So I've got the onboard charger hooked up to the batteries. There's four leads. Two positive, two negative. Uh, I got the 12 volt circuit on this one battery alone right here. I've been doing this for a really long time. Now, if you were a professional rigger, I'm sure you'd want three batteries so you could keep it isolated. But this does fine for me because I have very low power current draw and everything. So all my 12 volts coming right here. And the wires land right here on the terminal strip. Circuit breaker for the 24 volt troll motor. Battery disconnect for the 24 volt. And it all works. And my wires is pretty neat. Considering I can't get in there, it's uh, about as neat as you can get. So if I go turn my green light on up here. Uh, some of my LEDs are not working. I'm going to rip these off and put a new strand of LEDs on here. But it works. I got 12.58 volts right here on the terminal strip. I'm going to find a hanger to hang this up or something to keep it out of the way. Put some Velcro around the cord. But that's the line I use to catch bait at night. Trolling motor. It works. I'll get a new battery for my remote, which I think I've got one here. Um, it's labeled. The only thing I've got to do now is the wire for my onboard charger. Now for years now, the, right out 11 years, I've been just opening the hatch and pulling a extension cord down. Well, I have something in mind for that. If so, this you drill a two inch, you get a two inch hole saw and you drill it and I'm gonna drill it right here. And this goes on the outside with three screws. And on the inside, you plug that guy up to it right there. So all I have to do is flip a little plastic cover up plug my cord out of the ceiling into it and I don't have to open the hatches then to charge my batteries. We put one of these on my brother's boat. It's nice. Now I hate having to drill a two inch hole inside my boat, but seeing as how unless something tragic happens, I'll keep this boat from here on out. So I'll go ahead and drill a hole. But anyway, I'm gonna do that off camera. 
let's take another look at it under here and as you can see pretty neat now, and like I said, I'm not a professional rigger. I, you know, I can't get in these holes very good, so I'm having to do everything one-handed. Um, but yeah, if you got any questions on anything here, I will try to help you. Uh, there'll be a list of everything I use from the number six wire to the 16 wire, stainless screws, adhesives, heat gun, heat shrink, uh, fuse blocks, circuit breakers, the whole bit. I'll put all that down in the description. But yeah, I am tickled to have this done. I've been wanting to do it for a long time. So, but Anyway, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell to be notified. And if you're over on Rumble, do the same thing. But I hope everybody's doing well today. I hope you're having a good day. And I guess that's about it. Yep. I got a few more things I'm going to do to the boat so I can get it ready to go to the water. I hope y'all are enjoying yourself. And like I always say, until the next video, thanks for watching.